Congressman Lee Zeldin faced an attacker armed with a blade at, thurs at a Thursday event. Yeah, and thanks to New York's cashless bail laws, the 43-year-old suspect was arrested and immediately released after the attack. Meanwhile, his opponent, Governor Kathy Hochul, is taking heat after her campaign sent an email detailing upcoming Zeldin events and mischaracterizing them before the attack. Here to react to all of this is New York's Republican nominee for governor, Congressman Lee Zeldin. Congressman, thanks so much for being here. Uh, we're, we're, we are glad you are safe and sound. I know you're still on the campaign trail. Thanks for taking a moment with us. Just in reading the introduction to this segment, Congressman, we have now covered this topic more than other cable news networks in total. Why is it that when it comes to a story like this, it's, and there's the graphic right there. MSNBC's covered it for 36 seconds. Why is it a non-story if it happens to Republican Lee Zeldin? Well, th this keeps happening over and over again. And you, you could find other stations that should be covering it and aren't. Unfortunately, some others are. Fox has been all on top of it. Uh, and as over, uh, I mean, I've been in Congress now since my fourth term. And over the course of these years, when you look at the Steve Scalise shooting, mm. you look at Maxine Waters calling from for confrontation from supporters to Trump administration officials at restaurants and and movie theaters or the Supreme Court justices who were being attacked at their homes and their residence. This doesn't fit the narrative. Uh, if the fact pattern flips on its head, and everything that I just told you uh, resulted in the victim being on the left side of the aisle, being Democrats, uh, you would then see a completely different story. It would be the number one story, and it wouldn't just be the number one story for a day. It would be the number one story for an entire cycle. And they would actually also be calling, I'm sure, every House Republican asking for us to comment and condemn what happened, demanding it. It would be a thing with protests in front of our office. That's the next level of it. I mean, one piece is whether or not you cover the story. And, and some are, have been covering this story that, that took place just a couple nights ago. But the next level of it is then trying to assign blame. I'm not trying to blame all Democrats for what happened to me two nights ago. That's just not how we're wired. We're talking about facts, uh, and we want to be able to move forward in a very positive way. And the perfect example, of course, is the need to repeal cashless bail in New York. Yeah, it is so ironic that that's what you were there to talk about. You get attacked, and then this guy gets released. Uh, Lawrence brought up a great point that the media spent more time talking about the catcalling of another con congresswoman uh, from another congressperson from New York, AOC, than they have what happened to you. And again, it's because of that narrative. What are you going to do moving forward? I mean, how do you think this event, what happened to you in the bail situation, um, how, how are you going to use this in your campaign, or are you going to, to make the point? Well, first off, I could tell you that when I woke up yesterday morning and I went to my first of many rallies during the day, security was ramped up. Uh, and this is something that we need to take very seriously, not just in our own campaign, but everywhere. Politics in 2022 and social media, we, we need to make sure that we're protecting that process. We, we have candidates who might be a Republican, a Democrat, uh, third parties that want to bring your ideas. You could debate, you could disagree, but violence should never have any place in our politics. Scores should be settled at the ballot box. And it's an important message for people on both sides of the aisle to be telling everybody. Because sometimes you use rhetoric with regards to a political opponent, and what you might think is the right and left limit to behavior, you might have a supporter who thinks that the right and left limit to behavior is even further and it's crossing a line that's not okay. Now, as far as policy goes, I believe that Castle's bail in New York should be repealed. And, and I've, I've seen with the, these stories of people get released on cashless bail and then they get rearrested for a murder or a double mm. manslaughter. Uh, we have, in this particular case, somebody who, within hours, was put right back out on the streets right after he comes on stage and he tries to stab me at a campaign event. And you can't do that to anybody. And here you have a member of Congress running for governor. It just has no place. And instantly, he goes right back out on the street. So let's talk about that, Congressman. You're, you're running for 
uh, to be the governor of New York State, but you're still a sitting congressman, a federal official. So my question is, have you heard from Nancy Pelosi and the Capitol Police to put you under protection, not your private resources to do that, A? And number two, have you heard from Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice of them filing some type of charges for attacking a federal official? I, I know that the Capitol Police have been in touch with my office. There's definitely been uh, an active conversation there as to what needs to get done. I, I don't know to the extent that decisions might get made to potentially uh, charge this attacker under federal law. Uh, so that's something that we're awaiting an update right now. Uh, just because I haven't personally received a phone call from Attorney General Merrick Garland doesn't mean that there has not only been conversations uh, within agencies, but I will tell you that uh, we have had federal agencies reach out directly to my office since the attack. Measured and reasonable as always, mm -hmm. uh, yet vigilant and uh, back on the campaign trail right away. Lee Zeldin, uh, thank you for sharing uh, your, your uh, story with us this morning. Good luck on the campaign trail. We really appreciate it. We're so glad you're you not got hurt. It. Have a We're great so morning. So glad. Thank you, Congressman. Yeah. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.